And now we move to yet another event, the book launch of the Chairperson Chartered Institute of Arbitrators UK Nigeria branch, Mrs. Ade Doin Rhodes Vivo. The launch was held at the International Center for Arbitration and ADR. It attracted some of the big names in the legal and the business community. My privilege to invite. Arbitration has developed into the preferred means for resolving commercial and investment disputes. Indeed, it is preferred by foreign investors, and so business leaders, the Nigerian business community, lawyers and other professionals need to have a clear understanding of it and the best global practices. And so this group of professionals have gathered here in honor of Mrs. Adedonye Rhodes Vivo, a shifting scholar who has practiced law for over 30 years with specialization in commercial transactions, international and domestic arbitration, and alternative dispute resolution, Mrs. Rhodes Vivo has written a book, Commercial Arbitration Law and Practice in Nigeria, through the cases. Indubitably, the book, Commercial Arbitration Law and Practice in Nigeria through the Cases by Mrs. Adedoni Rhodes Vivo is a treasure trove of information, cases reported and unreported, and practical experience of arbitration law and procedure. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we give you commercial arbitration law and practice in Nigeria through the cases. The book is unveiled and the author speaks about her experience while writing it. I wanted to acquire the review of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, which is now outdated and no longer represents international standards. I can say that the um, arbitral community, of which the Chartered Institute is a member, has also set up a committee right now to look into the ways of reforming that law. We've been working very hard, and we are hoping that we'll get a law, an amended law passed in due time. In the course of my arbitration career, I've witnessed arbitration matters being locked up in the court system for several years, militating against the very reasons for entering into an arbitration clause in the first place. I have wondered whether, why Nigeria cannot quickly fully tap into the gold mine of developing itself into a preferred arbitration destination as a means to economic development and prosperity. Indeed, there's immense economic reward in taking this step, which does not happen accidentally. Commercial arbitration law and practice in Nigeria through the cases is a comprehensive and quick reference material offering practical guidance through Nigerian cases. The book provides the author's analytical commentary of cases reviewed and topical issues arising from the decisions of the courts. And just before we go, let's quickly do a recap now of some of the top trending stories from the courtrooms. We begin with a report that a federal high court sitting in Abuja on Thursday, December 1st, dismissed the bail applications filed by leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, and three others with whom he has been prosecuted by the federal government for offences including treasonable felony and an act preparatory to acts of terrorism. Presiding Justice Binta Inyako, while ruling on the applications filed by the four defendants, held that they were not deserving, as most of the charges preferred against them were ordinarily not bailable. The judge also held that she had no reason to deviate from the earlier findings of Justice John Soho. The judge, however, made an order for the accelerated hearing of the case. Justice John Soho, who was initially handling the case before Kanu accused him of bias, had also refused to grant bail to the accused persons. The case was transferred to Justice Nyako on account of Kanu's allegation and all the accused were rearranged before Justice Nyako on November 8th. <laughs> Staying in Abuja, Justice Okon Abeng of the Federal High Court has adjourned till December 14th and 15th the continuation of trial in the case against former Governor of Adamawa State, Murtala Nyako. At the last sitting of the court on Wednesday, November the 29th, the EFCC had sought to tender documents of over 30 bank accounts 
in evidence against the former governor and seven others who are facing trial on a 37-count bordering and money laundering. The charges against the defendants include criminal conspiracy, abuse of office, opening of multiple bank accounts and stealing to the tune of 29 billion naira. The defendants, who were arraigned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, allegedly opened over 30 different accounts with Zenith Bank PLC with the money between 2011 and 2013. When the prosecution counsel, Rotemi Jacobs, a senior advocate of Nigeria, sought to tender the documents used in opening the account, the defense team led by Kanu Agabi, another senior advocate of Nigeria, raised an objection on the grounds that the defendants needed to go through the documents before they could be tendered in evidence. He asked the court to adjourn the matter to enable the defense go through the documents to ascertain their authenticity as claimed by the prosecution. Justice Abeng agreed and the matter was subsequently adjourned. Fundamental Rights Enforcement Court orders release of outlawed group leader El Zegzeki. Another judge of the Federal High Court in Abuja on Friday, December 2nd, ordered the Department of State Services to release the leader of the outlawed Islamic movement in Nigeria, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki, within 45 days. Justice Gabriel Kolawale also ordered the federal government to provide an accommodation for El Zagzaki, his wife and family members within Kaduna State or any part of the northern region. Justice Kolawale made these orders while delivering a judgment in the two rights enforcement suits filed by the Sheikh and his wife. The court declared their continuous detention as unlawful and illegal since the issue of protective custody was unknown to law or the National Security Agencies Act establishing the DSS. The court further awarded the cost of 25 million naira as general damages to be paid to Ibrahim El Zagzaki, who must be released unconditionally to the Inspector General of Police within 45 days. The IGP is also ordered to convey El Zagzaki and his wife to the accommodation provided by the government. The court awarded 25 million naira damages to Mrs. El Zagzaki, making a cumulative of 50 million naira as general damages. From Abuja, we move over to Calabar, where a federal high court on Tuesday, November 28th, sentenced 16 persons to life imprisonment for adulterating about 100 tons of petroleum product suspected to be automotive gas oil, popularly known as diesel. The suspects were arrested on July the 7th by the operatives of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps along the Brass River in Bayelsa State while heading towards the sea on the vessel MV Aliza Lila. In a four-count amended charge, they were arraigned by the Bayelsa State Command of the NSCDC on behalf of the federal government. The 16 men pleaded not guilty to the offense. But in his ruling, the presiding judge, Justice Iyang Ekwa, after evaluating the evidence, found all the defendants guilty on all the four-count charge and he sentenced them accordingly. They were sentenced to life imprisonment without an option of fine on two of the four counts. They are also to forfeit the vessel to the federal government. And we round off in Benin City, the capital of Edo State, with a report that the state governorship election tribunal has adjourned till December the 7th to commence hearing on the separate petitions filed before it. The petitioners are Pastor Osaige Izeyamu and the People's Democratic Party, while the respondents include the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the All Progressives Congress, APC, and Mr. Godwin Obaseki. The tribunal ordered the petitioners to file the application and serve same on the respondents, while the respondents are also expected to respond to same by Monday, the 5th of December. And that's the program for today. If you missed any part of it, you can find it on past episodes on our YouTube channel. Do also give us feedback via any of our social media platforms. I'm Shola Shoyeli. Thank you for watching.